Are you looking to optimize application capacity? Amongst all the other things, global load balancing is definitely one to check out. Well, stay tuned to learn more in this episode of Get Cooking in Cloud. Last time, we talked about load balancing on GCP, including HTTPS and network load balancing. There are a lot of ways to set up a load balancer and backend instances to support something like Beyond Treat's growing e-commerce website. They've become a national hit and need to start scaling their website backends to meet demand. One thing to highlight is GCP's Compute Engine Managed Instance Groups to take advantage of auto-scaling capabilities. This lets you automatically add or delete instances from a managed instance group based on increases or decreases in load. Auto-scaling helps your applications gracefully handle increase in traffic and reduce cost when the need for resources is lower. You define the auto-scaling policy, and the auto-scaler performs automatic scaling based on the measured load. Check out episodes four and five from season one of this series for more on auto scaling. But scaling global applications can be challenging, especially if you have limited IT budgets and unpredictable and bursty workloads. You have holidays in each country that spikes demand for treat orders at different times. On Google Cloud, the flexibility provided by features like auto scaling and load balancing can help. However, auto scalers have some limitations. There are five major issues that come up with auto scalers. The most common issue is that your auto-scaled new backend running your website isn't ready to serve your traffic fast enough. You might have startup scripts that need to be loaded before VM instances are ready, meaning traffic ends up at existing instances that are over capacity. Second issue is that some applications cannot be auto-scaled at all. For example, databases often have limited backend capacity. Only a specific number of frontends can access a database that doesn't scale horizontally. The third issue is that your VM backends might have too little headroom capacity. To account for sudden bursts of traffic, an autoscaler should include ample headroom. For example, you can set the autoscaler to go into effect when your backend reaches 70% CPU utilization. To save costs, you might be tempted to set this target higher, like 90%, but this can result in scaling bottlenecks when confronted with bursts of traffic, like an advertising campaign that suddenly increases demand. Fourth issue is regional coders. If you have unexpected bursts in a region, your resource coders in that region might limit the number of instances you can scale to. And the fifth issue is that you might have non-elastic licenses. When you use licensed software, you might have a preset maximum capacity. So you might not be able to autoscale and run that software on more than, let's say, five instances. You can address these challenges with GCP's global load balancing solutions like HTTPS load balancing, SSL, and TCP proxy load balancing. First, let's walk through a recipe of how our global load balancers handle bursts in traffic. As you may know, typical load balancers use an algorithmic approach to distribute traffic to backend servers like round robin, where packets are equally distributed between all backends, regardless of the packet's source and destination or hashing, where packet flows are identified based on hashes of traffic information, including source IP, destination IP, port, and protocol. All traffic that produces the same hash value flows to the same backend. Today, we're going to focus on Google's global HTTPS load balancer for layer 4 HTTP or HTTPS traffic. Typical HTTPS load balancers use a DNSFH algorithm, serving to different load balancers in each region. Failover to another region is possible, but it can take minutes based on time to live or TTL configurations. Generally, a small amount of traffic is still directed to old servers well past the TTL. This makes it not ideal for bursty loads. GCP's global HTTPS load balancer uses a different approach. Traffic is proxied through the Google frontend or GFE servers deployed throughout most of the global network edge locations. Then the load balancer algorithm is applied at GFE servers. Here's how it works. The HTTPS load balancer uses a special algorithm called waterfall by region. Traffic that goes to the load balancer IP address is sent through a proxy to the backend instances. The algorithm determines an optimal backend by taking into account the proximity of the instances to the users, the incoming load, and the available capacity of the backends in each region and zone. The load balancer then distributes traffic based on available instances. To add new instances based on the load, the algorithm works in conjunction with auto-scaling instance groups. 
Okay, let's walk through some scenarios when Beyond Treat's traffic load becomes too much for its managed instance group to handle in one region. First, let's talk about the traffic flow in one region. Under normal circumstances, all traffic is sent to the region closest to the user. Then, the following happens. Traffic is distributed across instance groups, which can be in multiple zones. If capacity is unequal between zones, zones are loaded in proportion to their available serving capacity. Within zones, requests are spread evenly over the instances in each instance group. If an entire region reaches capacity because the capacity limits you assign to an instance group, the waterfall by region algorithm is triggered and traffic overflows to the next closest region that has available capacity. As each region reaches capacity, traffic spills over to the next closest region, and so on. Let's say you have unhealthy backends and you need cross-regional overflow. If the health check sees more than half of the backends in the region are unhealthy, the GFE servers preemptively overflow some traffic to the next closest region. That way, you don't have an entire region failing as the region becomes unhealthy. OK, now let's say all the regions you have instance groups in are above capacity. Traffic is then balanced so every region is at the same relative level of overflow compared to its capacity. For example, if global demand exceeds global capacity by 20%, traffic is distributed so that all regions receive requests at 20% over regional capacity while keeping traffic as local as possible. So how does using HTTPS load balancing actually address the five capacity challenges we talked about in the beginning? Let's see how. Now that we've discussed how the GFE and waterfall by region algorithm works, the HTTPS, TCP proxy, and the SSL proxy load balancers can overflow capacity to other regions. This means that it's a good idea to use a global load balancer over the regional load balancers, especially when it comes to global e-commerce sites like Beyond Treat. Apps that use regional backends have nominally lower latency, but they can become overloaded very easily. For latency in starting new instances, if the autoscaler cannot add capacity fast enough during bursts, the HTTPS load balancer will temporarily overflow connections to the next closest region. As soon as backend instances are scaled up in the original region, new traffic is routed to region closest to the users again. For apps like databases limited by backend capacity, you can still overflow traffic to the next closest region when demand in one region is beyond capacity deployed for usual traffic needs. As for too little VM headroom, regional overflow still saves money because you can either set up auto scaling with a high CPU usage trigger or make backend capacity well under a region's capacity since overflow to other regions ensure global capacity will always be sufficient. Now, for regional quotas. If compute engine resource quotas don't match demand, load balancing overflow automatically redirects part of the traffic to a region that can still scale within its regional quota. In the case of licenses, the load balancer can move traffic to a region where licenses are available. You just set the maximum number of instances to the same as the maximum number of licenses on the autoscaler. It's key to point out that you do need to set up managed instance groups in the regions you feel are appropriate for your user base. You have to also take into account things like app licenses and dependencies like database scaling to meet the demand of auto-scaled website servers. For more information about GCP's global load balancing, check out the solution article by our friend Jens Coolers, linked below. That's all for today on Get Cooking in Cloud. Hopefully, we were able to intrigue you with ingredients and recipe to whip up a resilient and performant dessert site for our global fan base. If you like this video and would like to see more of this content, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel.